Good morning. morning. Welcome to worship this morning on this fifth Sunday of Easter. A huge thank you to Nancy Pokorny, who is filling in for John today. Um, After being with us last Sunday, John had a wonderful Mother's Day with his family, which ended up in his whole family coming down with COVID. Um, And so John is home and uh, doing okay, getting better every day, Um, but we're grateful for Nancy. It is also why my mask will be my close companion today because we were together in the office on Tuesday before John started feeling not well. Um, I have tested twice and am negative, but out of an abundance of caution, I'll be wearing a mask when I'm close to anyone today. The time has arrived for our All Saints garage sale. It is this Friday and Saturday, and uh, all hands on deck for this fundraiser for the church. Uh, We can use all the help we can get, whether you have signed up on Sign of Genius or not. We uh, are looking for folks during the week to help sort and set up. any time that you have free time, when the office is open, you are welcome to come and help do some of that. Uh, you can look at the sign of genius for specific times when we know there will be people here if you would like uh, to be working with a crew of people. Um, but between the sorting and setup and the actual sale, uh, if you have any time at all that you are willing to help with that, that would be much appreciated. And, of course, if you are looking to make someone else's um, trash your very own treasure, uh, there will be a member pre-sale on Thursday from 4 to 6. And so All Saints members will get uh, first dibs at everything that is available. I want to extend a huge thank you to all of you for your gifts, um, especially over the last season of Lent and Easter for the Good Neighbor Personal Essentials Pantry, Madison Area Jail Ministry, and St. Mark's Food Pantry. Uh, We have been getting thank yous from many of those organizations, um, and you will see those in the upcoming newsletter, but I just wanted to share a few words uh, from the thank you note from Good Neighbor's Personal Essential Pantry. They wrote, without your generous gifts, we would never have been able to become the strong, reliable source of essential personal and household hygiene products that our guests count on when they are in need. Know that your gifts have lifted a burden off the shoulders of women, men, and children who are suffering from chronic poverty, health issues, and for dysfunctional families. And so a huge thank you to everyone um, who has been a part of all of those ministries, but a special thank you Uh, from the Good Neighbor Personal Essentials Pantry. And then just a note that uh, we have about a month to adjust our heads and our clocks, uh, but for the summer, we will be moving to just one service at 9 o'clock. And so invite you to uh, put that in your brain, but in the back of your brain, because it's about a month out. We are going to start that on Sunday, June 12th. So we will finish out the season of Easter and celebrate Pentecost, with our two service schedule and then on Sunday, June 12th, we will move to one service. And on that day, uh, we also will have the, um, the fun and excitement of celebrating our 2022 high school graduates. And so um, make a note of that on June 12th, worship will be at nine. For those of you at this service, that is not a worry because if you come at 8.30, you just get a half an hour of social time with everyone. Um, Folks that are normally used to coming at 1045 might have a little bit more of a hard time with that. Um, And just a reminder that we are once again passing the hand of friendship pads. Those should be in the front row in each section. They're not in each row, but in the front row. And so we invite you at some point during worship um, to sign in on that and then pass it back to the back um, of the section that you are in. I invite you now to stand as you are able as we join together in our thanksgiving for baptism. Alleluia! Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia! In the waters of baptism, 
we have passed over from death to life with Jesus Christ, and we are a new creation. For this saving water and for this mystery, let us bless God who was, who is, and who is to come. We thank you, God, for your river of life flowing freely from your throne through the earth, through the city, through every living thing. You rescued Noah and his family from the flood. You opened wide the sea for the Israelites. Now in these waters, you flood us with mercy and our sin is drowned forever. You open the gate of righteousness and we pass safely through. In Jesus Christ, you calm and trouble the waters. You nourish us and enclose us in safety. You call us forth and send us out. In lush and barren places, you are with us. You have become our salvation. Now breathe upon this water and awaken your church once more. Claim us again as your beloved and holy people. Quench our thirst, cleanse our hearts, wipe away every tear. To you, our beginning and our end, our shepherd and lamb, be honor, glory, praise, and thanksgiving, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. O oh Lord God, you teach us that without love, our actions gain nothing. Pour into our hearts your most excellent gift of love, that made alive by your spirit, we may know goodness and peace. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning. Both readings this morning are from the New Testament. First reading is from Acts chapter 11, verses 1 through 18, which can also be found on page 895 in your chair Bible. Although the author does not name himself in the scripture, evidence indicates that the apostle Luke is the author of the book of Acts. 
Acts represents a bridge between the New Testament writings of the Gospels, such as those of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and the apostolic letters, such as those of Paul. Acts revolves around key persons, especially Peter and Paul, and the geographical advances of Christianity from Jerusalem to Rome during the first 30 years of the church. Today's reading covers Peter's missionary journey on the Mediterranean coast. A reading from Acts. Now the apostles and the believers who were in Judea heard that the Gentiles had also accepted the word of God. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcised believers criticized him, saying, Why did you go to uncircumcised men and eat with them? Then Peter began to explain it to them step by step, saying, I was in the city of Joppa praying, and in a trance I saw a vision. There was something like the, a great sheet coming down from heaven, being lowered by its four quarter, quarters. And it came close to me. And I looked at it closely. I saw four-footed animals, beasts of prey, reptiles, and birds of the air. I also heard a voice saying to me, Get up, Peter. Kill and eat. But I replied, By no means, Lord, for nothing profane or unclean has ever entered my mouth. But a second time the voice answered from heaven, What God has made clean you must not call profane. This happened three times. Then everything was pulled up again to heaven. At that very moment three men sent to me from Caesarea arrived at the house where we were. The Spirit, Spirit told me to go with them and not to make a distinction between them and us. These six brothers also accompanied me, and we entered the man's house. He told us how he had seen the angel standing in his house and saying, Send to Joppa and bring Simon, who is called Peter. He will give you a message by which you and your entire household will be saved. And as I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell upon them, just as it had upon us at the beginning. And I remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said, John, baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If then God gave, the, God, God gave them the same gift that he had given us when we believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I that I would hinder God? When they heard this, they were silent. And they praised God, saying, Then God has given even the Gentiles a repentance that leads to life. The word of the Lord. Second reading is from Revelation chapter 21, verses 1 through 6, which can also be found on page 1007 of your chair Bible. The author of Revelation is the Apostle John. Revelations was written about 95 AD at a time when Roman authorities were beginning to enforce the cult of emperor worship. Christians who held that Christ, not Caesar, was Lord were facing increased hostility. John writes to encourage the faithful to staunchly resist the demands of emperor worship. Today's reading reflects John's vision of a new heaven and a new earth. A reading from Revelation. I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared 
as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a low, low <coughs> excuse me, I, and I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them. They will be his peoples. And God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. For the first th things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the at the on the throne said see i am making all things new and he said write this for these words are trustworthy and true then he said to me it is done i am the omega i am the alpha and the omega the beginning and the end to the thirsty i will give water as a gift from the spring of the water of life the word of the Lord. Holy Gospel according to John, the 13th chapter. When he had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Before I moved away from Wisconsin and then moved back to Wisconsin, my mom and I had a special tradition on Mother's Day weekend that Circumstances haven't quite allowed us to rekindle now that I am living close again. But that tradition was that rather than buying her a bouquet of flowers for Mother's Day, we would take a trip or two or three to different nurseries in town and would pick out flowers and then would spend all afternoon on Mother's Day digging in the dirt, planting them around the house in numerous flower beds. And I have to tell you that this was no small task at my mom and dad's because as my parents have been in their house uh, for over 40 years now, uh, they have created a beautiful retreat in their backyard incredible garden space back there and not to mention the wonderful reception you get when you pull in in the front yard but it's always so much fun to work with my mom side by side not just watching those flower gardens become new again but also being a part of it happening 
Maybe you have begun to do your own garden work, or maybe like me, you have simply been admiring the work that others are doing because you haven't quite gotten out into your own garden yet. With flowers blooming and trees budding and grass becoming lush and green again, there is no better season than this one to bring life to the words of God that we hear today in Revelation. See, I am making all things new. After gray skies, brown grass, bare trees, and cold days, we too are refreshed with the new life all around us. God's promise to make all things new is good news. These words help to offer us hope and keep us going when there are other parts of our lives that may seem to be stuck in a cold or lifeless place. No matter what is troubling us, relationship challenges, job stress, health problems, or countless other struggles, we can trust in these words. God is making all things new. When we can see a need for change, a need for newness, we are eternally grateful that God is always making things new. But that's not always the case, right? We may not always want new or see a need for new. And even if we do, see that need or want that need, we may not always be ready for what new means. Those words of promise may not always be exactly what we want to hear. Maybe, especially after the past couple of years, we would like to hear God say, I'm returning everything to normal. Or even, I'm going to make things just like they were in 2019. Or maybe there is another time. Maybe you would love to hear God say, I'm going to make things just like they were five years ago or 10 years ago or 20 years ago. But that's not what God promises. God tells us, I am making all things new. And new might mean different. And different isn't always our favorite thing, even when it is a good thing. As we are in this season of graduation for college students right now and for our high school students in the coming weeks, there are all kinds of new and different things ahead. Not only for them as they strike out on new adventures, but also for their parents and their siblings. It's been a while since I went through that myself, but I remember all of those new experiences after graduating being both exciting and frightening. And especially as the first of my siblings to go away to school, I can't imagine what that time must have been like for my parents. Perhaps you have also experienced that feeling, whether it was life after graduation, moving to a new place, getting married, starting a family, starting a new job or a new school. All of these things are filled with joy and excitement and usually at least a little bit of cautiousness or fear. Together, as a faith community, as we continue to take steps out of the pandemic, we too are looking to figure out what it is that God is calling us to today, how we might be part of that all that is becoming new. A couple weeks ago, our council voted to apply to be a part of Awaken Dane, a program that will help us listen to God, listen to our neighbors, and listen to one another as we together figure out where we are being led as a congregation. We'll be invited to try some new things, to think in new ways, to envision how God is making all saints new in 
order to help us fully embrace our part of God's mission in this world. God is making all things new. Some of those things we will embrace and be extremely grateful for. Others may go mostly unnoticed. And others we will likely struggle with, fight against, and not like at all. There's comfort in those things that we know. And we don't always like the new thing. We don't always know the new thing that God is doing. It's true of the new things that are happening around us, but perhaps the most difficult of all of the new things that God is doing are the new things that God is doing within each of us. God calls us to new life each day. As we return to the waters of our baptism, we die to sin and rise to new life in Christ. We are made new again and again and again. God continues to shape us and mold us, which can be hard work, both for God and for us, as we struggle to let go of our familiar sinful selves and allow the Spirit to work within us to help us be the faithful disciples God calls us to be. God is making all things new. You, me, our community, all of creation. And as we both embrace and struggle with that, we're invited to be a part of it. How can we best do that? In this season of Easter, the celebration of resurrection and new life for Christ and for us, our gospel today takes us back to Monday Thursday, to the night that the disciples are gathered with Jesus in the upper room. The night he washes their feet, shares a meal with them, and gives them a new commandment. Just as I have loved you, so also should you love one another. That commandment doesn't necessarily sound so new to us, does it? It's a commandment that we have heard over and over again. Love one another as Christ has loved you. That is the key. All of this newness that God is bringing comes down to us loving one another. This commandment is probably both the easiest and the most difficult command that Jesus gives us. One theologian put it this way. This new command is simple enough for a toddler to memorize and appreciate. And it is profound enough that the most mature believers are repeatedly embarrassed at how poorly they comprehend it and put it into practice. So what does it mean to really love one another? Luckily, Jesus doesn't leave us without any guidance. He calls us to love others as he has loved us. We have Jesus as a model of this love. And we have the amazing blessing of being the recipients of God's love before we are asked to share it. God's love comes to us first. A love of action, a love of grace, a love that wraps us all in a warm embrace. A love that might seem unattainable if Jesus hadn't embodied that love to show us the way. His is a love that reaches out to the poor, the needy, the sinner, in both word and deed. A love that led him to lay down his life for others. There are no limits on the kind of love that Jesus shares with us. That is the kind of love 
that we know and trust, the love that we receive so generously from God. But that is a tall order to live up to. We struggle daily with loving like Jesus. But that is precisely when we count on God to do something new in us. Today we hear about a new creation, a new heaven and a new earth, about a new commandment that we love one another as Christ loved us. We celebrate and give thanks for the fact that each and every day God is doing something new in each of us, in all of us. God is forgiving us, making us new, and renewing our deep, heartfelt passion to share that love that we have already received with the world. God is making all things new. You, me, us, our community, all creation. And just as I had that opportunity to work side by side with my mom, helping her to make her flower gardens new each spring. We are invited to be a part of God making all things new in this world by loving as Christ loved us. We might need to get our hands dirty, but the new life and beauty that God brings in and through us is always worth it. Amen. invite you to stand as you are able as we join together in confessing our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Set free from captivity to sin and death, we pray to the God of resurrection for the church, people in need, and all of creation. <clears throat> Loving God, Lead us to follow your spirit rather than our own prejudices or desires as the church cares for one another. Open us to perceive your gifts in those we least expect. 
God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Inspire us to praise you through the beauty and majesty of the natural world around us. Urge us toward more deliberate care of the world you have made. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Humble the rulers of nations before your splendor. Direct them to the people who need their attention most and turn them from the temptation to hoard wealth or power. Bring peace to Ukraine and other war-torn areas. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hasten to dwell among those who are in pain or distress, especially John, Steve, Joyce, Joe, Barbara, Carol, Donna, Kathleen, Patty, Van, Judy, Jane, and those that we name before you now aloud or silently. As Christ enters our deepest suffering, remain with those experiencing despair and great need. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Place holy love at the center of all our relationships and communities. By your love, heal us, convict us, and renew us. Bring an end to racism in our churches and communities. Let everyone know your goodness by the love we show one another. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us a place in the diverse company of your beloved saints. Teach us the value of each person's identity and bless us with a shared identity as your children, kindred of Christ. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In your mercy, O God, respond to these prayers and renew us by your life-giving spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, and all God's people say, Amen. You may be seated. For our children's message today, I want to talk a little bit about riddles. How many of you enjoy riddles? Does anybody like riddles? Does anybody have a favorite riddle that you like to stump people with? All right, well, I have a couple, and I am, invite you to shout out an answer if you think you know what it is. So what am I? I fill up a room. I can fill up a room, but I take up no space. Light? Ooh, good answer. Not the one I'm looking for, but good answer. <laughs> Any other guesses? What was that? Thought. Oh, look at you. That's deep. That's awesome. Also, not the word I'm looking for, but I'll give you another clue and see if we can figure it out. I am priceless, but I come to you for free. Care, did I hear? Hair? Air. Oh, air. It's <laughs> like hair? Okay. Uh, yes, air absolutely is true. Comes to us for free, but we would not be anywhere without it, would we? What was that? Love. You think maybe we're talking a little bit about love today? I have one more. I can be, this one will, will tip you off maybe um, out of all of those that we've heard. Light, air, thought, Care, love. We'll see if you can figure out which of those this one is. I can be powerful, tender, deep, sometimes complicated, and blind at the same time. We're going to give it to Nancy, right? We're talking about love, right? So we... <laughs> it, it, my unending love and the love of God. <laughs> is your prize. Um, but we're talking about that love today, right? We're talking about 
that commandment that Jesus gives us that we should love one another. And hopefully, love, while sometimes it is complicated and messy and the love that we deal with on this earth, the good news is that the love of God is not a riddle. It is not complicated. It is something that we receive freely without price, but that is completely priceless to us. So I have another riddle for you. What am I? I love others by baking them cookies. How about, I love others by donating to the food pantry. A Christian. I love others by standing up for them when someone is not being nice. Or I love others by sharing the good news of Jesus. I think Nancy is locked in today. It might be that she had to do a little extra work looking at scriptures to pick music for today. (laughs) But yes, we know, Jesus tells us, that everyone will know that we are his disciples if we have love for one another. And so we put that love into action in a variety of different ways. Maybe it is baking cookies for your neighbor. Maybe it is standing up for someone who is being picked on. Maybe it is telling somebody about the amazing love of Jesus that you have experienced and that you want them to know as well. All of those are ways that we show love for one another. And through all of those ways, hopefully others will see the love of God that we share with one another. Will you please pray with me? Jesus, we thank you that your love is no riddle or joke, but that you love us with an incredible, unending love. Help us to share that love as you have commanded us, to love one another with that same kind of incredible love. In your name we pray. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share signs of peace with one another in ways that you are comfortable. invite you to stand as you are able as we join together in our offering prayer. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, 
ruler of heaven and earth. Day by day, you shower us with blessings. As you have raised us to new life in Christ, give us glad and generous hearts, ready to praise you and to respond to those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The risen Christ dwells with us here. All who are hungry, all who are thirsty, come. All are welcome at the Lord's table. You may be seated. Just a reminder about how we are doing communion these days, receiving communion. You're invited to come forward through the, down the center aisle. You'll receive a wafer of bread from me and then go to either side to receive a small um, pre-filled cup of either red wine or white grape juice. of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you, Beth. The body of Christ given for you, Janet. The body of Christ given for you, Carol. The body of Christ given for you, Sean. The body of Christ given for you, Ron. The body of Christ given for you, Susan. Body of Christ given for you, Carol. The body of Christ given for you, Marina. The body of Christ given for you, Jared. The body of Christ given for you, Al. The body of Christ given for you, Don. The body of Christ given for you, Alan. The body of Christ given for you, Carrie. Body of Christ given for you, Darren. Body of Christ given for you, Bob. Body of Christ given for you, Dan. Jesus loves you and is with you today, tomorrow, and always, Elizabeth. Amen.
clear. Jesus loves you and is with you today, tomorrow, and always. Amen. The body of Christ given for you, Joan. The body of Christ given for you, Brian. The body of Christ given for you, Patrick. Jesus loves you and is with you today, tomorrow, and always, Andrew. Amen. The body of Christ given for you, Heather. The body of Christ given for you, Jim. of Christ given for you, Nancy. Please stand as you are able. Now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. And all God's people say, Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, generous God, for in this bread and cup we have tasted the new heaven and earth, where hunger and thirst are no more. Send us from this table as witnesses to the resurrection that through our lives all may know life in Jesus' name. And all God's people say, Amen. Um, before our final blessing today, um, I am going to invite Carrie Lubowski to come forward. Um, some of you may know that Carrie got an awesome new job, but sadly it is in Pennsylvania. And so... <laughs> Um, today is Carrie's last day with us at All Saints before she moves to Pennsylvania. And um, I just want to say a word of thanks to you for the blessing that you have been to this congregation. Um, I know just in the last few years that I have been here from COVID task force to uh, stewardship and social justice, um, banner making so many ways that you have been such an essential place a per part of this place um, we're grateful for your presence here and pray that you find another place um, where you can be a blessing as well so can we say a prayer please for carrie good and gracious god we thank you for your humble servant carrie who does uh, share your love in so many ways. Be with her and her husband as they journey to Pennsylvania. Uh, help them to be blessings in that place in the same ways that they have been here. Continue to make them new um, and help them to know that they go with our love and with our support. In your name we pray. Amen. but also to live close to our families and we will miss all of you so much even though it's been a little rough the last couple of years <laughs> I do feel like I've gotten much closer to many of you throughout all of this so, and hopefully we'll be able to get back to Madison occasionally and come here and Sunday <laughs> And so our blessing today uh, for all of you, but especially for Carrie. God, the author of life, Christ, the living cornerstone, 
and the life-giving spirit of adoption bless you now and forever. And all God's people say, Amen. Thank you.